I can't give up now. I've been chasing this my whole life. And if the world's gonna bring me down, then I'ma get back up and fight. I can't give up now. I got people that need me to provide. And if the world's gonna bring me down, then I'ma get back up and fight. Yeah. All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Be That One Percent podcast. I'm your host, James Silvis, and that was a clip from a song called "Can't Give Up" by Connor Price. Um, and this is a, a channel, a podcast station that reminds you that somewhere in you <laughs> is your own unique greatness that you are one of one never was never will be someone like you someone who thinks like you talks like you dances like you laughs like you um that's your that's your superpower right and today there's a a quote that i have loved that i continuously come back to regularly to remind myself that our minds can be set in a different way. Mind set, setting your mind, right? And there's a quote uh, by, her name's Joyce. Let me find her last name. But the quote goes, we unconsciously recreate what is familiar until we choose something better. By Joyce Martyr. We unconsciously, without us knowing, recreate what is familiar until we choose something better. We unconsciously recreate what is familiar. What is familiar? Well, something I'm used to. That something you're used to might be a relationship you shouldn't be in. That familiar might be a job you don't like that you've hated for years but are still there that familiar might be a way your nervous system operates from stress and fear but isn't the way to a healthier more energy rich mind and body what is familiar is not always what is better What is familiar is often an illusion for what is safer. Yeah, I know this pain is pain, but I'm so used to it, I can anticipate it, I can predict it, therefore, I can handle it. But just because you can handle it, just because you're used to it, doesn't mean it needs to still be there. You can choose something better. You can choose a different relationship. You could choose a different job. You can choose a different place to live. You can choose to communicate with yourself in a different way. Those are choices. But that requires some awareness, some mindfulness, some asking hard questions, some being open to feedback from those that care about you, things that maybe you don't want to hear that can help you confront the truth and look in the mirror. Because maybe you've been just on autopilot for the last couple months, years, decades, just going through the motions, busy, 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 walls up, head down, just getting through. Just got to, you know, get through today and we'll get to tomorrow. And, and life will always be like that. Oh, I'll wait until, you know, things slow down. When do things slow down? <laughs> You know, it's like the Zig Ziglar had this one uh, story, a parable that he was saying. He's like, you know, you ever have those, you ever see those parents that are like, oh yeah, you, you know, it's in the middle, beginning of the year. And they're like, we'll wait till, till summer. Then the kids are out of school. We'll have some time then. And then summer comes and then they, 
you know, something in their job happens or the kids want to go do something on their own. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. And let's, we'll wait till fall. Fall when the, when the kids go back to school, there's more routine, there's more structure. It'll be a little bit easier then. Then the fall comes and then a new set of challenges or circumstances arise and they can't do it then. Then they'll wait to the beginning of the year because every, well, we can change in the beginning of the year. That's, you start it off right, you know, whatever, you can always justify when to move something off right when when to kick the can further down the road and that gives us a temporary release of pressure because it's like ah okay well it'll happen in the future but does it then we get trapped in the familiar we get trapped in the things that we're not changing the best time to change is now tomorrow when i'm more comfortable tomorrow when i'm more prepared well what happens in between now and tomorrow a lot of things. Can you predict those things? No. So what can we begin to change right now in this moment? Yeah, it's going to be uncomfortable. Yeah, it's going to be different. Yeah, it's going to feel unfamiliar. Yeah, your nervous system is not going to like it because it's used to a certain way of operating. You're going to have a different set of emotions. We all have homes that we live in, these emotional homes that we've conditioned our minds and our bodies to to live in. So yeah, anytime you take it out of its quote unquote home, there's gonna be some disruption there. But we gotta trust that on the other side of hard is the thing that we're desiring, is the insight, the wisdom, the health, the money, the peace, the connection, the love, the... Uh, pride, the gratitude, hard, hard is the differentiator, hard is the, the pressure cooker, hard is the skill developer, hard is the, the weeding out of the committed, right? The hard is the precursor. It has to, in some way, be uncomfortable in order for there to be any growth. Can't grow when you're comfortable. There is no growth there. And one of the, the, the most the greatest antidotes for any sort of negative feeling is growth, is the sense that you're moving forward, you're making progress, you're living on a purpose, your your life has meaning. When those things are solid or those things are, you know, at eight or a ten, eight out of ten or above, things are pretty good. And they could always obviously be better, but those are that's a really, really great place to be. But we gotta we gotta do some some inventory checks with how we're operating. Otherwise, we're gonna continuously, unconsciously recreate what's familiar. The person we say we don't want, we're gonna keep meeting. The way we don't speak up in that meeting is how it's gonna keep happening. Us not honoring the boundaries or saying no, gonna keep taking place unless you choose better. And choosing better doesn't require a certain level of skill. It requires a decision, and decisions are scary because once you make a decision, once you cut yourself off from your current reality and enter a new reality, yeah, you're gonna experience some new, unforeseen, unpredictable set of events. That could mean you being, quote unquote, by yourself because you're you're leaving that relationship. It might mean some temporary discomfort by you voicing your truth or your opinion to your boss. It might mean sharing some feedback with a close friend that, you know, could could create some tension in that relationship. And then who, where is it going to go from there? All these are unknowns. But you got to ask yourself, what are you willing to comfortably or uncomfortably deal with in your life, right? Like, we're all creating every day. Some are just creating what they know, and some are creating in the unknown. And Joe Dispenza also shares that uh, the best place to create is the unknown because there's no, there's no rules for what it has to be. It's complete open space for whatever desire needs to flow through to wherever your curiosity is is leading you right but we have the choice we have the choice and this is something that i remind myself of regularly 
what am I choosing right now? In this hard moment, what am I choosing to do, to think, to be, to feel? In my marriage, how am I choosing to show up? Can I go through the motions? Can I just assume that Amanda is going to handle all the things that she does and then just go on my own way and be selfish and live in my own world? Or can I acknowledge it? Can I shift it? Can I do something different? We all have our patterns. We all have our behaviors. We all have you know things that we prefer. But it, again, it isn't until we check, we reflect, we uh, look under the hood. What's going on? Are we liking this path? Is it supportive for us, for the world, for our families, for our communities? Is how I'm responding and showing up to life something that I'm proud of, something that adds value to me and to others? These are the questions. Then we consciously create better. Another one of my favorite quotes, do simple better. Complication happens all the time complicated making things complicated is can also be uh, a way fear manifests in that you always have a reason to not do the thing oh well it's you know it's kind of it's complicated and if it's complicated it's too hard to explain therefore i'm not going to explain it therefore i'm off the hook very rarely are things too complicated to do something about if you simplify it enough to do one thing right now do simple better Breathe, eat real food, go on a walk, go to bed earlier. Simple. Do simple better. And the more you do simple better, the better you get at simple things. And when you understand the fundamentals, that's where mastery starts coming in. Then you can take it and weave in multiple comp, uh, multiple um, insights and strategies and components from multiple disciplines because you understand the fundamentals in, in all those areas. I understand it physically, how I show up to the gym. Oh, there's a mental kind of download or thought that I had the other day while I was at the gym that's actually helping me in my relationships. Because I spoke my truth and honored that boundary in that one relationship, I'm now seeing, you know, where that relationship is tying to food and the food that I'm eating. Mm, interesting. So you have these multiple areas that you're living your life in, but the common denominator between all those things is you. You're showing up to all those things. So as you get better in one, more insights start coming through. There's some applicability there if you distill it enough to the, to the simplicity level that it can cross-reference. You can It can bleed into other areas of your life. But again, that comes with providing yourself with the right infrastructure, the right level of clarity in your mind. And it, it again, starts with what am I un unconsciously recreating that is familiar but not better or not in alignment anymore or at all? And then journal, meditate, communicate that to yourself, to others, trusted sources. And from there, you'll begin brick by brick laying those bricks as precisely as you can to build a really strong, beautiful castle that you could be proud of that has a view of a gorgeous valley that you wake up to every morning. You're like, man, I built this. <sighs> That's a great feeling. And it's hard and it's beautiful and it's messy and it's all of it. And that's what life is. So show up, be you, own the one of one. No one ever was or ever will be you. That's your power. And create better. Much love. Till next time. Peace.